My guest, Femi Rogers, is a licensed Trek realtor, member of the GHB and HAR, and a seasoned real estate developer. With over 29 years of experience bonding real estate, construction, and energy sectors, Femi is a true expert in his field. He also serves as a CEO of Rustin Group, a prominent real estate investment corporation specializing in custom and spec homes in Greater Houston and Nigeria. He joins me now to discuss further on recent development. Many thanks for joining me, Femi, on Business Insights. Thank you, Justin. All right, let's talk about what is going on in Nigeria. When it comes to shelter, most Nigerians, practically everyone is concerned because um, shelter is one of the main you know, issues that everyone has to deal with. If you don't have a roof over your head, you'll be so troubled. Now, recently, there have been several demolitions ongoing across uh, Lagos State uh, or the landmark uh, area, and of course, uh, recently in Mende, and lots of confusion, lots of reactions. But uh, a lot of people, a uh, school of thought, believes that uh, the right sensitization or communication um, was not done before the demolition. What is the best industrial practice? Well, these kind of problems are not, they're found in the, in the developed world as well. I, I develop in the US. I'm a builder. I develop, I build homes, spec homes, for which I sell. Mm. And I've seen instances where government have to come in mm. to uh, demolish buildings that don't have the right approval. Mm. However, there are processes out there mitigates a lot of, I see a lot of those issues happening in Nigeria because they don't have a, a, a good process and they don't implement their process. Mm. But this is not something that is not seen abroad. Mm. Now, I was listening to the <coughs> TV this morning and I heard the commissioner, uh, mm. we had a meeting with some of the developers mm. and was asking them about um, if they had uh, the required papers. Mm -hmm. Apparently, these people went ahead and built without having a building permit. Okay. Now, I, I also see him trying to, uh, you know, make, make a point on whether, I think one of them mentioned that they have title. So he was trying to distinguish between a title and a uh, building permit. Okay. A lot of people are not clear. That okay, you can so have for a, clarification, what's the difference between a title a, and a building permit? Thank you. Now, a title is your papers that you have that shows ownership of the land. Like a C of O? Like a C of O. It could be a receipt. Okay. It just shows, hey, I'm the owner of this land. It could mm. be um, a deed, whether recorded or not recorded. That's what a title is. That's what you have okay. that shows your ownership. All right. A building permit in the other, on the other side mm. is a permit by the authorities to say, go ahead and build. Now, you can have a title for a land, but not have a permit. Mm. You could buy a land where there are restrictions. You cannot build this kind of house, or you cannot even build a house. Mm. Now, you can, they can sell to you a land where there's a right of way for anything. Now, you go buy it. We, we, we do that over there as well. All right. And you can't build anything on it. You've just bought a land you can't build on. Maybe you're supposed to put in um, something else. So, a lot of people think, oh, when I have a land, I can build, or I can build anything. No, there's a difference between those two. You need to go back to the authorities and get a building permit. Mm. What has happened in that situation that I see is they do have title, or from what I heard, but they don't have a building permit. And I, I don't know how they went ahead and built. So if they are developers, they would have known that they're supposed to get a building permit. Okay. Right. So I think they went ahead and built without a building permit. That's where the first issues are. Okay. Aside from um, getting the permit, you know, uh, there were talks of, uh, you know, adequate um, communication. But ordinarily, even if they did uh, get a building permit and the government needed to, you know, use um, the, the land or whatever for some reason, you know, how does the communication process flow? What kind of notices are given? Okay. So, usually, there should be a mas what they call a master plan in Nigeria. We call it a okay. subdivision. It could be master plan, because wherever. So there's a plan for most of the areas mm. already. Not today. It's, always, it's already been done way mm. ahead. Now, those plans might change from time to time based mm. on so many other things. But the plans are there. Mm. As a developer, you should get a survey. The short survey, even without a survey, you can get access to the master plan. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest issues we have here is maybe the government has not provided the master plan for the general public 
to have access to. If I was going to buy a land in the U.S., the first thing I go into is quickly do a, a quick research. Can I build the kind of houses I build in this area? Are there restrictions? Are there easements? So, so what you're saying is that before anyone even ventures into any sort of um, building construction plan, you have to find out about the master plan of that particular location. Is that how it's done? As a pro most people don't know that. But mm -hmm. as a professional, that's what I do. I buy land over and over and over again. I don't want to run into a mistake. So they have provided websites. They have provided access to this thing without me going to the government. I can quickly go into different websites and see what is going on here. Is this a land I want to buy before I even put my money down? The seller is actually on me and saying, hey, let's sell. I want to sell. I'm saying, hey, just within 24 hours, I'll go through all the website, try to make a good research to see if I'm not going to have issues. Hmm. Okay, so fine. Uh, another thing is uh, people building on, uh, like you said, uh, getting the right, uh, you know, sovereign and everything. But people actually building close to water uh water logged areas or maybe you know to areas uh, close to the ocean and all of that how is it really done because one of the one of um uh the constructions and that was affected was the landmark area over time right now most people have actually been enjoying you know all the leisure and the recreation you know from landmark but right now with the lagos um uh you know calabar coastal um you know roads that is about being um undertaken by the federal government uh, that area is actually affected was it that uh, they did not really do their own checks or the it was just a new development by the federal government because as it is right now businesses are being ruined as it is so <clears throat> i don't know if there's an easement yes. where so you have you have you can buy a land but they're mm -hmm. going to say you can't build anything on this side of the land because there's going to be a road or there's a utility that is going to come in there in the future or anything. Mm. And so therefore, when the government comes, they will take over. There is no, they are not really demolishing an improvement. And it happens over there as well. They'll mm. just show you there's an easement, don't build. Mm. Take 25 feet off or 25 meters off from this easement. They're coming in to build something or do something else. So you don't build there. And I guess that's what happened in the case of Landmark. Mm. I heard he didn't build up to that place. So it's not unusual for the government to come in and say, yeah, we're ready to build our road and we're taking this part out. Sometimes they compensate if they have already given you approval to do something else on that part. Mm -hmm. I think he built some kind of recreation thing, you know, so they gave him. So it's not unusual, it's a normal thing. For the general public, the government must have its way. They have their plan, they have their master plan. So it, it's not unusual, it's, it's, it's something that happens over there usually. Mm. It's common. Okay, reactions and counter reactions have been trailing this uh, recent development with popular singer uh, and other Nigerians talking about uh, how it actually impacts on real estate development and how it is, uh, you know, discouraging uh, investors into that particular sector. How true is this? Well, I mean, you can look at it from two perspectives. If I was an investor, I want to come into a stable environment. I want to come into an environment where I know there are rules and regulations, where I know that nothing is going to change in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So this could be a wrong message to some investor saying, hey, the government did not make sure they didn't build here and they're going to come back and change whatever their you know, policies are. But I don't really think it's most serious investors want to see a stable climate. They want to see a place where things are regulated, laws are implemented, laws are enforced. Mm -hmm. I believe that if the government enforces uh you know development plans on time mm. lots of people will bring in their money they, they know that they look i'm not going to build and they're going to you know so i think it's a two-way thing i as an investor i want to make sure that the government is doing the right thing they're making sure look we don't go and build on the place where there are going to be issue, uh, issues and they're giving us the right permits mm. so if the government is enforcing for me it's fine i will bring in my money in an area and this is what they do over there they do demolish <laughs> it's not, it's not that, you know, they come in and demolish, if you have not done anything right, you build, and they will come in and demolish, it's, un, it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. What I think is we should have an environment where they are implementing policies, mm -hmm. you know, and nobody, somebody is not taking money to allow you to go ahead and do something. Mm -hmm. Why the government is coming in maybe two, three years after Landmark has built is, I don't understand. Or maybe they had they gave him an allowance to build, but he's not. He did actually build on the easement. I think he just had some 
and guardian or anything, which is which is fine. And that happens over there. It's not unusual. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, for a situation like this, uh, for what happened in the Mende area, that's Maryland area of Lagos now, so how do we ensure a win-win situation right now? Some people have been rendered homeless and the state government has to do what it sh should do. So how do we find the balance here? I think the state government is doing the right thing. You must send the right message to the people. You can't build on the right of way. What the destruction that is going to come later on is much more. I see a lot of people, it's very apparent that the people that build there, they don't have a building permit and mm. they know they should get a building permit. Mm. The only thing I think the government should have done is really allow them to build all the way. Okay. You know, they, it took so long before they come in to implement. Mm. And so that shouldn't happen. Maybe why they don't have a they don't have the right people that checks on what is going on why did they get to that extent where they built a whole community and wasted mm. so much money before they came in and but i i still think it's fine for the government to do what their job is at this point now should they um you know uh pay compensation for people that have done something that is wrong mm. i don't think so all right, let's look at all the development that um, have happened um, in recent times in terms of um, real estate developments. Let's stay with Lagos, uh, for instance. Uh, not too long ago, we heard of um, a report where some people were living in very unsavory uh, locations uh, under the bridge and everything, and some people were making profit out of all of them, you know, even charging rentals for, from such people. Uh, it goes back to show um, the issue of um, housing deficit uh, in not just Lagos, but Nigeria as a country. How to begin to stem all of these issues in the board? The president has already said it when he was coming, that he was going to uh, make mortgage available. That's, that's the easiest way for you to get, uh, 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 to get um, more houses you know, in. You, know, you have mortgage facilities where the people can buy the homes that are already built nobody mm. go, there's no most places in the world nobody goes in and drop a large amount of money like a hundred million to buy a house that's too much you're mm -hmm. taking everything off that you have on the savings you can't do anything else you can't start any other business in the u.s you need as little as three percent mm. to buy a house so an average person can buy a house and what does that do the bank provides you a mortgage you buy the home so you are, you get a loan from the bank, buy home. Yes. The developers build more homes because mm. they are, they have purchasing power. People have purchasing power. Mm. You know, so this is the way to go. The government should find a way of providing mortgage. Once they provide mortgage to the people, the people are buying more homes. Developers are building. So why is that not working in the country so well, far? Like, since we knew all of this over the years. From what I've read, I think the government are doing the right thing. I understand from I think I was talking with somebody recently, and they were talking about the BVN. So what we do over there before you can get a loan is they need to see your profile. They, want, they need to see what's your record at. When you borrow money, do you return it? We don't have this. They check your credit score. They check, you know, all that. All this has to be in place to make sure the person they are borrowing the money to is somebody that can pay back or the person that is not going to walk away. So I guess this is part of the things the government are going to put in place. We have a long way to go. But as long as the government starts working towards this, there is going to be... All these things are going to be resolved in the future. The, the, the process is already laid down by the developed world. All we have to do is go back and copy it. Now, we might have our own issues of implementation, but uh, I think we'll get there with time. Okay, as we begin to round off now this conversation, let's look at the future of um, real estate in Nigeria because uh, uh, some people have seen it as um, a cash cow. There's so much to be made, and uh, over time, even have people who should not be doing the business, unscrupulous uh, so called developers, you know, scamming people over time. But what's the future for real estate in Nigeria, you know, with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lekki Atlantic, uh, you know, coming on board and other estates are just everywhere so what does it really hold for nigeria and in terms of uh, issues of inflation that we have uh, and purchasing power so what's the future for the real estate industry in the country the little research i did into uh housing deficit shows that just about less than 70 percent of nigerian owns home all over nigeria mm. a lot of people and those 70 percent are the same people that own in lagos they are the same people that are buying in Kaduna, mm. so they are buying in Abuja, or they are buying in their hometown. Every other person is either, you know, living under the bridge or doing something else. So we have a lot of work to do to produce homes for the people. The in real estate industry has a long way to go, and the, the, it's going to provide jobs. The, the government needs to pump money, and they need to put the right processes and structures in place. 
so that people are buying, people are purchasing power. They need to also put in regulation and enforce those regulations to make sure the industry is stable so that investors can bring in money and, you know, start, you know, um, you know, um, you know, investing in that industry. All right, well, must say a very big thank you to you, Femi uh, Rogers, for the useful insight that you have um, shown, and of course, uh, what Nigerians really need to do, and of course, the government uh, in terms of um, doing the right process and, of course, enforcement, so that we can have uh, affordable housing and all Nigerians can have um, roofs over their heads. Must say a very big thank you to you for joining us today on the show. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonyomeni. Thanks for being a part of it. Bye for now.